this on May 11th, 2016, which for us is tomorrow, but we might not put this up till tomorrow, so today for you guys, we're not even going to go into that app and try to blow your mind, but then, so DC Talk, the same day, uh, May 11th, we'll have a new announcement, we'll have an announcement tomorrow, um, at noon, um, not sure what it'll be, but they already announced that they're doing a reunion tour, which can't wait for that. Also, Red End of Silence 10th uh, 10th anniversary album, which was also Red's first album, will be coming out sometime this summer with a few extra songs. Uh, Gold Frankincense of Myrrh has a new album coming out this year, late summer or early fall, as we heard in that interview. When we get uh, to our interview again, we'll see if they finalize the date yet, but they're probably just going to be hitting studios, if I remember correctly. Then Disciple has a new album this year, crowdfunding, uh, not available yet, but I can't wait for this crowdfunding. It will uh, be, that album will come out late this year. White Chapel, one of my favorite bands, has a new album coming out June 24th. They have a new single out, Mark of the Blade, really good, I'd recommend looking it up and listening to it. And then Thousand Foot Crutch, better known as TFK, has a new album with three singles out already. This new album will come out June 17th, and it's called um, Oxygen Exhale. It's part two to Oxygen Inhale, but this time it's called Oxygen Exhale. And I forgot to mention, the White Chapel album is called Mark of the Blade, and then the Disciple album is Long Live the Rebels. Um, for TFK's album, they have three singles out, which is which are Born Again, um, Running with Giants, and I can't remember the, uh, I think it's like Insignificant, or no, Insufficient, something like that. Who knows? And then Papa Roach has a new album coming out this year. They have not announced a time yet, or it could be next year, but let's go with this year for now. And Skillet, finally, has new music coming out this year, May, tw uh, May 20th, and then they have a new album coming out later on. Shut up, rabbits! I think there's someone down there. Yeah, there are rabbits, too, though. Anyway. Are you sure it's just rabbits? You yeah. keep talking, Tyler. But the uh, new skill has a new song coming out May 20th, and then after that, after that, they, um, after that, they'll, they'll probably be announcing that album the same day when it comes out. I heard unofficially that it's August 5th is when this album comes out, so hopefully it's August 5th, before Uprise. I know they're already going to be playing new music before that, but I'm hoping it's before Uprise. Hmm. So, that's everything for me. We have 12 minutes remaining. And we're going to sit inside in our, in our show. And I actually have a very interesting article that I want to talk about. This is out of USA Today Sports. It's by Nate Davis. Just published today. And it's entitled The Top 16... Can't read. Can you speak? The 16... I don't think I can read either. The 16 top NFL storylines to watch in 2016. And I'm going to react live to... Well, not live, but I have not pre-read this article. So I'm going to react to them as I read them here. They've got about not a paragraph live. on each one. Tyler, you can weigh in if you have any thought on, on any of these, too. Uh, I can't weigh in on those. I need You're scale. not heavy enough? No. You just need a scale. I get you. I feel you. All right, number one. Can the Denver Broncos repeat? I'm going to go ahead and read over the paragraph here. No. Well, I think we know what Tyler thinks about this. History would suggest a rather emphatic no. The last team to successfully defend its Super Bowl crown was the 2004 New England Patriots. Yay. Denver's bid to go back-to-back -back will be complicated by an additional hurdle. The Broncos are the first champions to enter the following season without their previous starting quarterback, or his backup, since the 2001 Baltimore Ravens. Like these Broncos... Those Ravens sported a dominant defense, but were blown out in the divisional round of the 2001 playoffs amid a horrible performance by Elvis Gerback. Who? I have no idea who that is. Trent Dilfer's replacement. Mark Sanchez and or Paxton Lynch face a mile-high mountain trying to replicate what retired Peyton Manning and departed Brock Osweiler pulled off in 2015, especially with the Kansas City Chiefs and Oakland Raiders on the rise in the AFC West, and capable of ending the Broncos' five-year perch atop the division. Okay, what do I think about this? Here's what I think about this. There's no way the Broncos are winning another Super Bowl this year. And here's why. Quarterback play. I will say that it is rather... that I, I should say it, it's fair to point out, I think we should not neglect this point, that the Broncos made it 
it to and won the Super Bowl with rather subpar quarterback play. I mean, think about it. De- uh, Peyton Manning really did not play all that well. And Brock Osweiler was average. I mean, everyone's say, you know, singing his praises, but he wasn't like an incredible quarterback. He was, no. he was kind of average. And to be honest, Peyton Manning was average and at times below average. So I really don't think that the Broncos necessarily are going to are going to really be looking for the same kind of play they had last year because it was average. I think if they can get what they want out of Paxton Lynch, that he can be a franchise quarterback. I don't think that Mark Sanchez is the answer, although he may be able to pull off a couple of starts here and there while Paxton Lynch is getting trained, I, uh, you know, per se. But I don't think the Broncos are going to repeat. I think the Jaguars have a better chance of winning. Oh, man, well, I go. I'll we have to talk about this later. The Jaguars are a stacked football team. We'll do that in part two. The Oakland Raiders too. I mean, the Oakland Raiders. Mm-hmm. I can't, it's like I said, the Chiefs. There's a chance the Broncos don't even make the, the playoffs, and I can understand what people would be saying. I mean, the defense is still incredible, so I think they probably will make the playoffs, whether winning the division or getting by the wild card. But I don't think they win the Super Bowl. No. I think that too much has happened. Too much has changed. I mean, they did lose Malik Jackson, too. Uh, too much has changed. I don't think they're going to be able to win. Uh, number two on the list of the top six, uh, 16 storylines. Dimmed star power. When was the last time the league had such a max, uh, had such a mass exodus of players? Of greatness. Wow, dude, I can't read it all. Let's try this again. No, do you just want to end the show right now? When was... No, 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 let's go over a couple more. <laughs> when was the last time the league had such a mass exodus of greatness? That question would be relevant had five-time MVP Manning been the only player to retire this offseason, but he could be joined in the Hall of Fame's class of 2021 by Charles Wilson, Calvin Johnson, Jared Allen, and perhaps Marshawn Lynch. I mean, we had a lot of players that were great retired this year. Several other former Pro Bowlers also hung up their cleats, including Matt Hasselbeck. He, Manning, and Woodson were the final remnants of the 98 draft. DeBrickishoff Ferguson, Gerard Mayo, Heath Miller, Justin Tuck, and John Beeson. Lots of room on stage for a new wave of stars. And I think this is a one of the biggest storylines that I'll be interested in seeing. Because you, you look at the this these great players that retired, not only retired, um, but we have a lot of players that will probably – that really had – part of an incredible class of 1998 that may retire in the next couple of years. Um, And I think it's fair to throw Heath Miller into that mix. I mean, I'd like to see, more importantly than uh, necessarily following the players themselves, but how will their replacements function? You know, we look at the replacement of Peyton Manning. Who's that going to be? Hasselbeck was a backup for some of his career. Uh, he started for the Colts this year, despite the fact that he was like 41 Not over true. the injured Andrew Luck. But you look at some of these guys, Calvin Johnson. Well, wasn't Luck hurt? So that's Luck was hurt. Started. That's the thing, yeah. That, that's why he started that. Who's going to be your placement for Peyton Manning? Mark Sanchez or Paxton Lynch, most likely. I like to think this year it's Mark Sanchez and Paxton Lynch gets groomed uh, to be the starting quarterback down mm-hmm. the road. Um, Marshawn Lynch, I think his backup is probably going to be Thomas Rawls, uh, the guy that really performed well in his absence last year. Um, Calvin Johnson, you have still have Golden Tate on the Lions. Um, and then the defenses are going to have to pick up the pace for Oakland and, and uh, Carolina as Jared Allen and Charles Woodson exit the scene. And then Heath Miller even. you got Ladary Screen, the Steelers recently signed tight end. Um, out of uh, from the San Diego Chargers. So there's a lot of things to keep in mind, not only uh, from the players' perspective themselves, but as to their replacements. I think this is a, one of the biggest storylines, in my opinion. All right, how much time do we have left, Tyler? Uh, lower five minutes. Lower five minutes. How much time do you think we can get to? One more, maybe? One or one, two more? Uh, let's do one more, and then we right, can we'll see what play a song yep. and do part dose. Number three, Comeback Trails. Now feel free to interrupt me if you want to have if you have anything you want to talk about about Pardon this. Pardon the interruption. PTI. No objection. <laughs> Overrule. No teams are likely to benefit more from a few months off than the Dallas Cowboys and the Ravens. Dallas lost quarterback Tony Romo and wide receiver Chris Bryant for a combined 19 games to end in 2015, more than enough to torpedo their NFC East title defense. Baltimore sent 20 players to injured reserve. 20. Think about that. That is. That's, that's half the team. Exactly. Is that half the team? No, there's 52 guys on the team. So, so that's almost guys. half the team. It's like, it's over a third. Including Joe Flacco, 
Terrell Suggs, and Steve Smith. The primary explanation for their failure to miss the playoffs for only the second time in the Harbaugh-Flacco era. And they lost Justin Forsett as well, keep that in mind. Oh, yeah. Um, armed with healed bodies and a top, ten, top ten draft picks, both clubs should rebound. Other stars looking to make an impact after suffering season-ending injuries in 2015 include Le'Veon Bell, Kelvin Benjamin, Jamal Charles, Andy Dalton, Jimmy Graham, Justin Houston, Andrew Luck, Ty- Tyran Matthew, and Jordy Nelson. Can we you run through that list oh again? Oh, goodness. And double speed. These are so... The, all these guys are incredible football players. And, and here's they all the thing. got hurt. They all got hurt. And that's not as much a testament to the players themselves than the amount of injuries we had this year. Is that teams? The, the... Pardon? Never. Pardon the interruption, but no. Just <laughs> Pardon the interruption. Um, but, I mean, look at this. We are, we are having so many injuries over the past few years. There have been an incredible amount of injuries. And you look at these guys. These are star power players. So how many of the other lesser known players are getting injured as well? We had a lot of injuries. Yeah. Too. Um, I think that if the Ravens can stay healthy, they will be formidable, especially to my Pittsburgh Steelers. Same to the- same for the Cowboys. It's same for the Cowboys, I think, because the Cowboys still have a rather weak division that they're playing in. Oh, very um, weak. I still don't think the Ravens make the playoffs, to be quite honest. But they come close. I think they could come close, and I would not rule it out. I don't think they do, but I would not rule it out. I still think the Steelers and possibly the Bengals um, probably both get in the playoffs. I, I think that there's there's usually every year a wild card team in that AFC North, uh, so in, in that AFC North division. I think the both teams can be competitive if they can stay healthy, but I'm not predicting a playoff run for either. I think it's more likely for the Cowboys. Yeah. I personally think that the Redskins have a good chance as any to win the division again. I'm predicting a Redskins division win, but I think the Cowboys will come close. I'm still not confident in Philly or New York. No. Uh, even after... I said, give, give, the give the Eagles another year or two. Yeah, they can, they can probably... Give the Eagles another year to at least try this... Well, they're having the issues with Bradford right now, so, mm-hmm. you know. All right, well, well... he stopped whining. That's 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 very good. It's very encouraging. For Eagles fans, it is. All right, well, I think it is time for us to wrap up this podcast. We're going to have part two, don't worry, coming up right after this. And we'll talk... A little bit of sports and more crap then. More crap. Yeah. It's going to be a crap. I'm done with music stuff, way. so it's, we'll just call we'll call part one sports, music, and crap. Sounds good. Part one. Let's go with part me. two. When do we want to release this? Tomorrow or wait till the weekend? Right now it's Tuesday, May 10th. Do we wait till the freaking weekend? The freaking weekend. <laughs> Hashtag freaking weekend. Use it. Done. We'll, we'll talk about that. Well, oh, and before listen. we close this up, I want to give a shout out to David and Philip Mowish and whoever the heck else does that podcast. Sparklecast, it is awesome. Uh, they talk music, or they talk a little bit of music, but they talk music, video games, uh, movies, stuff like that. Race, uh, a, the recent news in uh, in entertainment sounds a bit like us, except we we talk sports too. Sports, music, they don't talk sports. Check them out, Sparklecast uh, on YouTube. You can find all their. Uh, their junk, their stuff. Uh, check them out. Junk. I want to give a big sh- <laughs> all their junk. Give a big shout out right now to Philip and David Mowrish and whoever else is on the podcast. Sparklecast. Here is Writing on the Wall by Parkway Drive, and this will be our opener for our next show. Then too. Sounds good. So enjoy Writing on the Wall. And they march with a smile into the cold.